The Book of Mormon cost the best blood of the 19th century. Many years ago, a young man gave up all he possessed in a search for truth that finally led him to the Book of Mormon. His name was Parley P. Pratt. In the spring of 1830, I was married and settled in a small home in the midst of a clearing made with my own hands near the Black River in Ohio. It was a beautiful, quiet place with a garden, thriving orchard, and fields of grain. About this time, my brother William, whom I had not seen for years, came to visit. My little brother, I am impressed. When we were together last, you had nothing. And now look at this. It would be difficult to leave it all. Leave it? What? Past several months, the Holy Spirit has wrought so powerfully on me, I can't rest. The scriptures, William, the prophecies, you've read them. Important things are coming. I feel I have to devote my time to enlightening my fellow man and in warning them to prepare for the coming of the Lord. As a minister? No, I don't have any authority. I doubt anyone has. See, that's the great missing link, William, the authority to minister in holy things. But I feel duty-bound to enlighten mankind so far as God has enlightened me. If I had 50 acres of land, comfortable house, fields of grain, beautiful garden, fine orchard, I'm sure I would stay and enjoy it while I lived. The world might go in its merry way for all I care. You've toiled for years to obtain this. Why not enjoy it? Whoever shall forsake houses and lands for my sake shall receive an hundredfold and life everlasting. Are those the words of Jesus Christ? I believe the Bible part. I wouldn't dare believe it literally. I feel called upon by the Holy Ghost to forsake my house and home for the gospel's sake. I plan to rely on the Lord's promises. If you think they are false. If I am sustained, they are true. God's speed, brother. We parted. He to his business, I to my preparations for a mission which would only end with my life. In August 1830, I sold my farm, completed my arrangements, and we bid adieu to our wilderness home, never to see it afterwards. you'd gone to bed. I had. And I discovered I was missing a husband. I need to leave the boat and stop a while in this region. Why? I don't know. But the spirit has plainly manifest that much to me. Go to our friends in Albany. And I'll come soon. How soon? I'm not sure. I have something to do here in this region. Exactly what or how long it will take me, I just don't know. But I'll come when it's finished. I took leave of her and of the boat and early the next morning walked ten miles into the country. Good day, sir. Well, good morning to you, stranger. I stopped to breakfast with a Mr. Wells and proposed to preach in the evening. He kindly accompanied me through the neighborhood to visit the people and circulate the appointment. A Baptist deacon, the name of Hanlon. He's a good soul. Say, 
That's it, Isaac. How are you, Thomas? Fine. Isaac, this is Mr. Pratt from Ohio. He's on his way to Albany. Albany? You're a bit off the beaten path, aren't you, boy? Mr. Pratt is a preacher of sorts. In fact, he will be preaching at my home this evening. He'll join us, won't you? Do you preach the scriptures, young man? I do. Good. I'll be there. Seven o'clock. We'll be looking for you. Mr. Pratt, are your views of the scriptures broad enough to accept such things as visions and the ministering of angels? They are. Come, sit. What is it, Isaac? Last week, I came across a book, a strange book, published down in Palmyra, said to have been originally written on plates of brass or gold by a branch of the tribes of Israel, and discovered and translated by a young man by the aid of heaven. There's even been talk of the ministry of angels. This book, do you have one? Loaned it to my sister. She'll be returning it in the morning, though, if you care to stop by. I will, if it's agreeable. I felt a strange interest in that book. The next morning, I called at his house where for the first time my eyes beheld the Book of Mormon. That book of books. The door's open. It's there on the table. Help yourself. I opened it with eagerness and read its title page. the testimony of several witnesses in relation to the manner of its being found and translated. I commenced its contents by course. I read all day. Careful from supper, Mr. Pratt? Eating was a burden. I had no desire for food. Sleep was a burden when the night came, for I preferred reading to sleep. As I read, the Spirit of the Lord was upon me, and I knew and comprehended that the book was true. As plainly and manifestly as a man comprehends and knows that he exists. Do you know what's in this book? I haven't been able to hold on to it long enough to find out. I don't know how to thank you. My joy was now full. And I rejoiced sufficiently to more than pay me for all the sorrows, sacrifices, and toils of my life. I'm on my way to Palmyra. My book. I soon determined to see the young man who had been the instrument of its discovery and translation. I accordingly visited the village of Palmyra and inquired for the residence of a Mr. Joseph Smith. Thank you very much. I found it some two or three miles from the village, near the close of day. Evening. Howdy. 
Looking for Mr. Joseph Smith, translator of the Book of Mormon. Well, he lives in Pennsylvania now. It's about 100 miles from here. I'd be pleased to speak with his father or any member of the family. Well, his father's away on a journey right now, but this is his home, and I'm his brother. Pleased to meet you. My name is Pratt, Farley Pratt. Mr. Pratt, Hiram Smith. I informed him of the interest I felt in the book and of my desire to learn more about it. He welcomed me to his house. And since neither of us felt disposed to sleep, we conversed most of the night. His kingdom should be conducted in the last days. These meetings took place every year for four years until finding that he was sufficiently prepared, the Lord entrusted him with the plates. Joseph said that a messenger descended When did this happen? On the 15th of May, to be exact. This is a new dispensation, Mr. Pratt. A new commission. Angels have visited the earth. Authority has been restored. And Israel is being gathered a final time in preparation for the second coming of the Lord. How far to your next appointment? About 30 miles. But I'll return when it's finished. Well, please do. We'll be glad to have you. Uh, could you use this? Please, take it. It's a token of our friendship. Thank you. Have a safe trip. I traveled on a few miles, and stopping to rest, I commenced again to read the book. To my great joy, I found that Jesus Christ, in his glorified, resurrected body, had appeared to the ancient inhabitants of the American continent, that he had taught them his gospel and healed their sick, and that many of his teachings had been preserved here, in this book, in purity. I esteemed this book, or the information contained in it, more than all the riches of the world. Yes, I verily believe that I would not at that time have exchanged the knowledge I then possessed for a legal title to all the beautiful farms, houses, villages, and property which passed in review before me on my journey through one of the most flourishing settlements of western New York. Such was the Book of Mormon.